Blackwood did have many light-hearted moments, but many people have very different memories of the conflict. One of the most dreadful experiences that the people of Britain had to deal with was, of course, the bombing of cities and factories where people lived and worked. Most of these raids occurred at night, but occasionally some bombs fell during the day when people were least expecting them. One such raid happened at Catford in South London, where German bombers flew unhindered over the English Channel and attacked a primary school. The story starts on the 20th of January, 1943. My brother was sitting by the window with three friends. I was sitting at the next table. I was sitting with my friends eating lunch, I think talking about the piece of shrapnel that we had collected. All of a sudden, the children in the dining hall heard the sound of an aircraft outside the window. I heard the very loud noise of a low flying plane. So I got up and I had a look, and honestly, I could see this plane so low, I could see the pilot's goggles. Thinking it was a British plane, the children rushed to the window to wave. We all looked out the window and then suddenly saw the black cross, but the pilot was waving to us. I know that sounds ludicrous to say today, but he did wave to us, and as he waved, we realised and up went the call, Germans, under the table. Do you know when teachers tell you you want to do something, scream at us all to get under the tables. Then there was a crash as the bomb hit the roof. It had a five seconds delay so that it penetrated before exploding. I saw the walls start to fall. So I got up from under the table and I ran as fast as I could. Lots of the children started to run for the door, my brother amongst them. I called him, who turned round, and I never saw him again. A bomb dropped from a German aircraft had scored a direct hit on the school and then exploded inside. The floors above the packed dining room collapsed straight onto the children below, trapping them under an enormous pile of rubble. But I was laying there and I, I, I heard crying and realised I was crying as well and saying, please get me out, get me out, because I couldn't see and I couldn't move. I had no feeling of pain. It was silence, as, as if I was the only one in the building. People nearby rushed to the scene to help. Among the rescuers was Reg Wolf, a volunteer air raid warden. It was a shock when I saw the big lump out the school with a load of people on it digging. The whole place was swarming with people, like ants over an anthill. I could just see little bits of light. And the next thing I remember was the rescue workers. It was two men, and they were pulling the bricks away from me. As quick as you could flatten the rubble, the quicker you could get anybody that was still around, still alive. And then somebody moved a brick. And that feeling of air, I, I can't really describe it to you, but it's a feeling that you never, ever forget. It's just that... It's like opening a window and getting that gush of air come to your face when you haven't been able to breathe. As rescue squads carried on with their... The rescue efforts continued for two days, and the brutal raid became national news. This was the London school in which there were 150 children when it was hit by a high explosive bomb. It shows how Germans always run true to their brutal form. You might have thought that hitting a children's school could be an accident that even Nazis would regret. But the raider's leader was Captain Schumann, who subsequently broadcast proudly that all his planes reached their objectives and dropped their bombs just where they wanted them to fall. In case you didn't know, it's that kind of enemy we're up against. One lump of rubble landed on my left arm at the wrist and also smashed into the head, uh, making me unconscious. Another lump fell on my left ankle, badly fact fracturing that. I had a fractured jaw and pieces of wood sticking out in various places, a big slit under there, um, another slit in the side of the head. 
and I lost the sight in the left eye. In a corner of the school grounds, there's a memorial garden for the six teachers and 38 pupils that were killed in the raid. It was the biggest single loss of children's lives during the war. Mary's brother John was one of those killed in the blast. They didn't find my brother for three days. Along with several of the other children, they weren't found for several days. Even now, certain aeroplanes, if they go over, I do a sh give a shudder because it's just like the planes all over again. Some of the heroes were the children themselves. Eric has his sister Kitty to thank for his life. She came running towards me and was by me or perhaps lying on top of me as the bomb exploded. Kitty shielded me. If it hadn't been for her, then I would have probably been the one that would have been dead. Well, Mary is with us in the studio. Hi, Mary. Now, you said, you, you said there in the, uh, in the film that when you hear aeroplanes going over, it still frightens you. How did the bombing affect you in your life? To start with, I lost my best friend. Um, and there's always been a vacant spot. That's right. That's OK. It's psychological, really, more than anything. We didn't have counselling in those days. Um, and I can see you found that really upsetting, even now. Well, there were shots there I've never seen. Right. I was going to say, that is a truly terrible story, and, and it was told so graphically now. D had you talked about it before with the, the people we've seen today? Um, at the 50th anniversary, some of us met up, and up until that time, I'd always imagined that I had seen the pilot, and I used to think that's impossible. It was just an imagination. And when, I suppose there were about half a dozen of us. And one of them said, tell me, I've got to ask a question. Did we see the pilot? Did he wave to us? But you feel you did see the pilot, all oh, right? Oh, we did. And how, how, does that, how does that make you feel about him? Do you still feel hatred? Have you ever felt that kind of feeling? He knew what he was doing. War was war, I know. And how any man can deliberately do what he did. He didn't just drop a bomb. He machine gunned as well. There are so many stories of people locally that were on their way home from school for lunch or were out shopping. And he machined anything and everything. What about your rescuers, though? I mean, the people who worked oh, to save your life. Oh, they were wonderful. Do you remember who rescued you? Oh, well, I know it was a man. And he, I can, I don't remember him getting me out of the bricks, but I remember him carrying me and laying me down. It always felt cold in my, in my memory, so I assume he laid me on the pavement or on the playground. Did you ever meet him again after that? No. And no. What, if you were to meet him now, what, what would you say to him? Oh, I'd thank him so much. <laughs> you know, I mean, there aren't words to express. But everyone, you see, it's, you, you were alive during the war. You know it was a different... Everyone wanted to help somebody. I mean, the minute somebody heard that school was bombed locally, they would go running round there to see if they could help. But otherwise, you didn't hear people's names. It was just something people did. Un unsung heroes, if you like. And the children that are at this school now, do they understand what's happened? Do they understand why the memorial garden's there? They're told about it, yes. Um, and I must say, they are delightful children. They really are delight. Thank you very much. You're welcome.